Hello, Prince Medic is here. I'm a 40 student of medicine at the University of Benin. Passing biophysics is quite difficult. But in this video, I won't just be teaching you how to pass biophysics, but how to get an A in it as well. My getting an A was dependent on two things. One is uh, where I studied my physics, my methods, and two is the topics I focused on. Because of these two steps, I'll be dividing this video into two. One is to focus on the methods I used to study my physics in order to remember them when the exam came. And two is the topics I focused on. While studying, I tried to memorize and understand as many definitions as I could, as well as formulas. Why at times want to test your knowledge of definitions by asking to define terms in the theoretical aspect? In the objective, you might be asked to choose the correct answer from the list of options given to you. So your knowledge of formulas and definitions is very, very important. An example, you might be asked in the theory to state Hooke's law, to state Ohm's law, to define motion to define friction. So you must have a deep understanding of all of those things to be able to repeat it when you're asked. I also tried to solve as many questions as I saw in physics anywhere. I use a test we call essentials in physics, not essential physics, essentials in physics. The textbook is mainly calculations. So I tried to solve as many questions as I could. There were some topics that contained up to 100 questions. I tried to solve all of them. So the constant solving of questions made me understand topics much more better and, and as well internalize the formulas. I as well used mnemonics while studying. An example is one I used while I was in my secondary school. This mnemonic helped me to convert uh, between units. For example, if you're asked questions, this wire can be very, very trickish. You might be asked a particular question and the units probably in mass you are giving the unit is in kg, another part of the question, the unit is in gram. So your ability to convert between the two. Another one, you might be asked question in meters, and in the same question, another unit is, another quantity is carrying kilometer. So you must be able to convert between the two. I use this mnemonic to remember how to convert. It's called millicenti decimeter, hecto deca kilometer. This mnemonic helps me to convert between units. If I'm asked to convert from millimeter to kilometer, using this method, I simply know it's one million millimeter that makes one kilometer. So I'm able to convert easily without getting confused. The milli in the mnemonic stands for millimeter. The centi stands for centimeter. The deci stands for decimeter. The meter stands for meter. The deca stands for decameter. Hecto stands for hectometer. Then the kilometer stands for kilometer. So if I'm asked to convert from millimeter to centimeter, using this mnemonic, I already know it's 10. By placing one on that milli and then zero on that centimeter, it gives you 10. Next is the topics I focused on. A disclaimer. I'm not listing these topics to dissuade you from reading every topic in your textbook. This segment is just to emphasize certain topics I've seen why it repeats constantly. In fact, I will tell you that why it is running short of questions to set. They basically repeat most of their questions. Don't tell them I said that. Another topic they like certain is motion. You should know the laws of motion. You should know the definition of friction. You should know gas laws, especially Boyce law and Charles law. They like certain those questions. And as well, you should know the mode of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. These terms are very, very important. You should know how to define them and where it is applied. You should know the difference between evaporation and vaporization. Most people use these terms interchangeably without knowing that there is a clear difference between the two, especially when you're talking about physics. For evaporation, evaporation occurs below boiling point, while vaporization occurs at boiling point. Why well, can't ask you something like this, but I see them asking it more. But nevertheless, you should know that there is a difference between the two. Another topic is waves. You should know the definition of waves 
You should know all the formulas that are contained in waves. You should know the difference between reflection and refraction. And very importantly, you should know Snell's law, sine i over sine r. Very, very important. You should know that the velocity of a sound is equal to frequency times wavelengths. So all of these little, little formulas, you might think they are insignificant, but from those formulas, questions are formed that at times will take you time to solve. So the more you practice these formulas, like I said earlier, you practice and practice and practice as much as you can, you get used to this. In fact, medicine has it that the more you practice a particular thing over and over and over again, your neurons, that is your, your brain cells, start connecting each other, making it much more easier for you to remember whenever you want to. All of these topics, try to practice them as much as you can. When I was preparing for my work, I remember holding my textbook side by side with my past questions. As I'm reading a particular, revising a particular topic, because this is not a time to start reading. It's more of revision. I believe you must have been taught in your class. Even if you cannot remember details, it's still called revision because you must have seen this topic or at least said of it. But if you haven't, I'm sorry for you. So you should revise these topics over and over. As you're going through a particular topic, revising it this time. Try to go to your past question and try to solve questions relating to that. I've mentioned a few formulas. These are the formulas I believe you should commit to memory. Formulas in your Hooke's law, in your elasticity, formulas in your motion, formulas in friction, formulas in simple harmonic motion, in fact. Simple harmonic motion is a topic I remember going through over and over again because there are lots of formulas in the topic. In fact, if you go beyond new school physics, then I was reading a little bit beyond new school physics. After going through particular of new school physics, I go to uh, essentials in physics. Then you see more questions relating to the topic. In addition to Boyce and Charles Law, study general gas law, and very importantly, you know the general gas equation. Also study equilibrium of forces, study resolution of forces, be able to resolve forces to the vertical or to the horizontal. You know the difference between scalar and vector quantity, very, very important. We should all know by now that scalar quantities are those ones that have magnitude but don't have direction. Why vector quantities are those ones that have magnitude and direction. This is very, very important, both for wire and motor. You should as well study momentum. Know that the formula for momentum is mass times velocity, and the formula for impulse is force times time. Finally, know the difference between fundamental quantities and derived quantities, as well as the difference between fundamental units and derived units. If you are done with reading for your wire and you want to revise, focus on these topics and the bullet points I mentioned. You'll be sure to not just pass your wire but you would get an A. In fact, I'm expecting you some more time to come to the comment section below and give your testimony. If you have watched this video to this point, I have a special gift for you. Yes, you. I've compiled the list of formulas and necessary points you need to do well in your work. Just click the link in the description below. What do you think is the most difficult topic in physics? Let me know in the comment section. And finally, which topic do you think I should have included that I missed out? Also let me know in the comment section. If you got value for your time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.